It's all flashy, colorful. Cielo X1. Woo! Hoka, what you doing? Okay, so there was a lot of marketing hype behind Hoka's latest race-ready behemoth. I was buying into that hype, and I could feel the stoke rising with NDAs, embargoes, big media pushes, the whole caboodle. But after my first run in the Cielo X1 from Hoka, something felt off. All right, so this shoe has a lot going on. Let's start at the bottom. Two layers of Piba midsole encase a pretty unique winged carbon plate that make the shoe super rigid, super responsive, and energetic AF. The upper is a flexi knit mesh that blends bright with durable and ties up with a hyper flexible tongue material under a Christmas ribbon-like lacing system. It's Hoka not pulling any punches in the performance shoe game, and boy does it show. So, at $275, is the Cielo X1 the next big thing, or is all the hype for not? Can I, a mid-packer, truly run faster or more efficient in something like the Cielo X1? Would anyone but the super elite benefit from a shoe like this, especially at $275? We have lots of questions to answer today, and so little time. Let's dive in. What is up everybody, Ethan Newberry, the Ginger Runner here for another Ginger Runner review. Today we're talking about this. One of the most highly anticipated, marketed, and embargoed shoes of 2024. It is the Hoka Cielo X1. Uh, I have to say, sometimes I fall for that stuff, sometimes I don't. I don't think I was falling for it this time. Uh, just a lot of marketing hype. I was very excited to get a pair and try it early before it was dropped and embargoed. Hey, you remember that day on Instagram when every runner in existence was dropping pictures of the Cielo? I did it too. Guilty as charged. There's just so much freaking hype around this thing. But you know me, I gotta temper those expectations. I gotta kinda keep things real, and that's what we're gonna do in today's review. Of course, a couple things before we dive in. Join the GR crew. It's our running community, uh, supporting one another, doing all the different goals. If you're looking for someone to support you in your next marathon, ultra marathon, trail, road, race, anything, we've got an amazing group of runners from around the world that are just like you, supporting one another. We have a Discord server, we have a great community, we do daily live streams, uh, all that good stuff. Get a hat, get a shirt, blah, blah, blah. Second. This is a review, and the FTC requires that I tell you that this shoe was provided for review by Hoka. I'm under no obligation to say anything positive or negative. I am not financially compensated in any way for anything that I say in this review. All opinions are my own. No one has to approve it. I get to say whatever I want, whenever I want, however I want, and you get to be the first to see it. So pat yourself right here. And without further ado, let's talk about the basics, the things that I like and dislike about the Hoka Cielo X1, starting, as always, with the things that I like. So, propulsive. This thing is a rocket when it comes to propulsion. Energy return because of this Piba midsole, the carbon plate, and its super unique shape, which is really cool. Uh, this shoe just, wah, this is what it does. It launches you forward. Uh, I can't promise it makes that noise, but I can promise you I do. It is just a fast, shoe and you feel it underfoot. I mean, just the way that the shoe feels and hits the ground, you get that sense that you need to stay on your forefoot and you need to move forward and you need to get to that finish line because if you don't, you die. It's just, it's just one of those shoes. And that is its huge marketing potential, saving grace, factor, speed. It's got it. Shape. So Hoka has always talked about this like rocker shape and really talked about how their shoes uh, are designed to go fast. I think they've done some things here that are pretty unique, even to Hoka. Check out the midsole and outsole. We've got a cutout. Finally, I mean, you've probably already seen this. I realize that now you've been looking at it the whole time. It's different on the inside. I haven't seen that. Uh, there's this great cutout, which not only reduces weight, but it also contributes to a little bit of lateral twisting, uh, which does allow for a bit more movement in your foot in a good way, not in like a, uh, so sloppy in a way that wants to move you forward. So I think what they're doing here with the shape of the shoe is super unique and quite fun, especially when you wanna pick up the pace. Build quality. So this is something that I haven't always given Hoka credit for. In this case, this shoe is built kind of like a rocket tank. Is that, is that a thing? Uh, the, the outsole is just, you know, kind of a sticky rubber. Uh, the carbon plate is built very, very nicely very well produced. The midsole, of course, the pigment midsole is just great, very responsive, very bouncy. The upper material is going to last you a long time. Um, the laces are completely indestructible. So overall, the shoe is built just freaking awesome. 
Uh, so it's going to last you a long time, which at $275, I would freaking hope so. That being said, it's not Aldora the Explorer pinatas full of Jolly Ranchers or foot-long churros dipped in caramel sauce. There are a couple of things that I dislike about the Hoka Cielo X1. Let's get to those now. Material choice. Okay, so yeah, it's a durable shoe and it's built tough and it's built to last, but almost to a detriment of the shoe itself. Uh, talking about a couple things here. The laces. These laces suck. They just do. They, they tie together well, but they don't stay tied together. You will have to double knot them or these laces will come apart. Uh, the upper material is this sort of knit upper. It's heavy, it absorbs sweat, and it kind of just retains it, doesn't really dissipate it. Uh, I have a major problem with the tongue material. I mean, look how far out I can like stretch this tongue. It becomes problematic. It does have a gusset, but it's a super thin gusset, and the material itself is just like freaking stretchy as all get up. The midsole will take a while to break in. That carbon plate, because of its sort of winged and cupped shape, will really want to fight you when it wants to flex. Uh, there's just a lot of things going on where the material choices in combination make for a shoe that might be a little over the top, which leads me to my next dislike. It's kind of meh. Like as far as a shoe for $275 is concerned, that's hyped to be like this next coming super rocket shoe, Nike, Alpha, eat your heart out. Um, it's just kind of meh. Like, all right, it is what it is. There was nothing really about it that made me go, oh shit, this is, this is it. This is the shoe that I'm gonna wear and rock my next marathon in. Uh, it just feels expensive for not a great amount of joy. Now, granted, I am a middle pack runner, a bit bigger runner. If I am like that super elite going for those few seconds just to pass a OTQ or something like that, maybe a shoe like this will come in handy when you need to shave some time off of your ultimate goal. But for me, it's, I just think it's overkill, it's too much, and it just doesn't provide me with a lot of the smiles more just a big pile of meh. And finally price, 275 bucks, it's a lot. There are very few shoes that are more expensive than this. There's a couple of trail shoes that are more expensive than this, and I have to say, they're not worth it. Uh, so at $275 for like the ultimate elite marathon shoe from Hoka, it's just too much. It's just too much. Okay, but that's it for dislikes. I realize I'm being pretty harsh there, uh, and I try to be as objective as possible. I think, I think I just get caught up in that hype in the marketing and I go, why? Okay, so let's get a bit more specific in our breakdown. We like to talk about the build quality, the comfort, the fit of a shoe, the price, the looks, all that good stuff. Starting with build quality. So while the shoe is built tough and the materials themselves will last a long time, it's those ingredients when combined into a recipe that sort of make for a problem. Comfort, the shoe is comfortable in that it is a shoe designed to go fast, so you do get plenty of propulsive elements. The energy return is phenomenal in the shoe. Uh, but when it comes to like, the carbon plate and that cushion and that overall feeling of a shoe, I don't know if I'm gonna find a lot of comfort over a long distance in this shoe because it just wants to fight you more than it wants to comfort you. Uh, maybe that's the intent. Maybe the intent of the shoe is to just like, get your foot out of it as fast as possible. Get you to the finish line, rip them off, and you have a new PR, something like that. Um, I just don't know if the comfort over the long run is gonna be something that the shoe is gonna be known for, fit. If you are into a shoe that is more accommodating, this will not necessarily be the shoe for you. I think it is narrow, typical of Hoka's these days. And I think the platform itself is high. It's a, it's a high stack, but also narrow. I don't think fit is necessarily a benefit or overall platform is a benefit because of that fit. Um, and especially trying to get a lockdown through this tongue, which is just annoying and the laces themselves not really staying tight. Trying to get a lockdown through the midfoot is nearly impossible on a regular basis. It's just a problematic shoe. And moving on to price. <laughs> what are you doing at $275? It is a lot of money to spend. Uh, you might have to sell both kidneys. It might be worth pulling those Pokemon cards out of the basement and seeing if you can get a couple sold on eBay so you can pay for a, maybe even just one shoe. Can you just get one of these? You gotta get a pair? That's too bad. Uh, $275 is a lot, and I would almost say too much. Uh, bringing us finally to looks. I think it is a interesting looking shoe in that it has bright colors, it has some iridescent qualities in that upper and the welded overlays. Uh, the reason I like it, I think it sort of looks like a cross between a Seattle Kraken colorway and a Seattle Seahawks colorway. 
and a Mariners colorway. It's sort of the Seattle sports shoe, if you will. And I have no problem with that. I love Seattle sports. I think the problem is just, you know, when you put them on and you kind of wear it with anything else. They're, they're, they're fine. They're fine. They're fine. Bringing us to our conclusion. So the Cielo X1s are a lot. Not just in price, too much, uh, but in materials, it's a lot. Uh, and overall feel and comfort. There's just a lot to handle here. And I don't know if a lot of us need this much. I think for a regular runner like myself, a mid-packer, someone who's just looking to go out there, run as fast as they can, a shoe like this certainly has its benefits by propelling you forward quickly and efficiently. But I think it also is holding you back because one, well, you're spending a lot of money and you're not gonna be able to buy yourself lunch after your marathon. Uh, but I think there are other shoes that do the job that this shoe does at a better price points and at better comfort without sacrificing overall foot comfort and the ability for the shoe to run long and not cause discomfort. So I'm looking at shoes like the Super Comp Elite V4 from New Balance that is a very comfortable carbon plated shoe that is about $25 less, still 250 bucks. There were certainly carbon plated shoes from 2023 that I recommended. If you go back and watch my gear of the year video, you'll find the links to those and the, the shout outs to those. I bet some of those are even on sale now. And if you really want to save some dollars and still get a carbon plated shoe because you want to feel like you're something, uh, check out Atreyu. Atreyu is a great brand that has a, a carbon plated shoe for just over a hundred bucks. It's fantastic. I love it. I have one back there and I have one over there. Uh, and I run on those all the time and I'm like, how do they make this shoe for so little? And how does that compete against the, the, the big brands? Uh, but it does. And uh, I, I don't know, I just really enjoy them. There's other options out there. You're not having to spend $275 for something that might work in some scenarios, but not all. Way too much money. We're gonna store final criteria. Is the Cielo X1 a buy, try, or a why? Where are you gonna put your hard-earned dollars? In this case, whoo, it's a why? I'm, I'm sort of trepidatious to give it a why, only because I'm kind of embarrassed, because uh, it usually takes a lot for me to kind of get there. I just, I just think that there's a lot to this shoe that's good, but nothing that to me justifies that high price point. The elite of the elite, they'll probably put this on and go, oh yeah, that's that's fantastic. But I think there are other shoes that we can all benefit from at lower price points that will do the same thing. That's it, that's it. Okay, that's it for today's review. I'm curious about your thoughts on the Cielo X1. Let me know in the comments of this video, do you like them? Are you getting a pair? Did you just cancel your order? Are you looking at now buying a pair? I have a link in the description. <laughs> want to get them uh but yeah let me know i'm super curious what the community thinks of shoes like this speaking of community since this review is wrapped up consider joining the gr crew it's a great way to support the channel but also join an amazing group of runners just like yourself from around the world super fun we have a discord server daily live streams all sorts of running related things that we're doing constantly and we'd love to have you join that community uh and super cheap great perks all that good stuff or get a hat and a shirt something like that we appreciate the support Get out there, train hard, race harder, and party the hardest I know I am. We'll see you guys next week for more fun. Bye-bye.